Hi, I'm David Hill, and I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Architect for VMware's Cloud Services Business Unit, vCloud Air. In this tutorial, we are going to walk through how we bring the virtual machines back from the cloud to our on-premises vSphere environment. We will go over how we configure failback, the options available to us, and the steps available once the virtual machine has been configured. Once we configure the virtual machine, we will take a look at how to monitor the replication status of the virtual machine. You will notice during this tutorial that the steps carried out to perform failback are very similar to the steps we follow to configure replication from vSphere to the cloud. You can configure your recovery point objectives, which are 15 minutes to 24 hours, and you can configure multi-point in time recovery. This gives us the same level of control as we see when replication from on-premises. Let's take a look at how we perform a failback. So now we're going to look at how we fail back our virtual machines into our on-premises vSphere environment. So this is literally how we bring virtual machines back from the public cloud to vSphere. So if you think you've had a disaster, your data center has failed, and you need you failed over your virtual machines, they're all running in the cloud, how do we get them back? How do we get them running back in our data center? So we're going to take a look at how we do this. And we do this by starting off by clicking in the vSphere replication plugin. And then we go into and click the monitor button. So this takes us into the area where we can monitor our replications in the vSphere replication appliance. So we click on monitor. And we can see here that in the previous tutorial, we failed over and we recovered virtual machine DR test 01 out to the public cloud. So we want to bring this virtual machine back. It's currently running in vCloud Air. All its services are out in the cloud and our end users are actually connecting to it in the cloud. So we want to bring this virtual machine back into vSphere and run this back in our data center. So it's extremely easy to do for a virtual machine that we've recovered and we've originally had running in vSphere that we failed over to the vCloud Air. Once we've done that, we simply go and click on this reverse replication button. And this allows us to just say, this virtual machine that we'd previously failed over, bring back to vSphere. So we click the reverse replication button and this opens the reverse replication wizard and allows us to configure the reverse replication to bring this VM back on site. Now we see a warning that says the existing virtual machine on the target site will become inaccessible. What this basically means is if, as in the case of this virtual machine, it still exists, although it's in a powered down state in vSphere, we will no longer be able to just go and power it on and use this VM. It will be inaccessible because we will be actually replicating from a live VM in vCloud Air back to our vSphere environment. This virtual machine essentially will become just a placeholder in vSphere. We just go and once we've checked that our settings are correct and our RPO settings are correct, we just click OK and this will configure the reverse replication. And we can see our tasks at the bottom are now showing that we're configuring a virtual machine for replication. And the replication of this virtual machine from vCloud Air will now start. So if we go to vCloud Air, we can see that this virtual machine was recovered and we see that we've now got a notification saying reverse replication has completed, the configuration has completed. And it now has a recovery status of reverse replication in progress. So this virtual machine is still running in vCloud Air, but it's replicating its data from vCloud Air back to our on-premises environment. So we know that reverse replication is replication from the cloud to our on-premises environment. Now, that virtual machine has disappeared from our outgoing replications because we're no longer replicating from vSphere. We're actually replicating back from the cloud. So it's now appeared in incoming replications, which is where we see the replication tasks for virtual machines that are coming into vSphere. So if we do a quick refresh, we'll see that this status is now showing an initial full sync. 
So we're copying that full virtual machine from vCloud Air back to our vSphere environment. But that's great for if we've actually had a virtual machine running in vSphere and we've now wanted to bring it back. But what about an instance where a whole environment has had to be rebuilt? How do we get virtual machines that have never been in this vSphere environment back into vSphere? How do we bring them back into our data center once we've rebuilt it? Well, we start in the incoming replications and we click the configure reverse replication button. So configure replication from a cloud provider. And this gives us a very similar wizard to what we saw when we were configuring replication to the cloud. So we select a source site, which is our VDC one. And now we're presented with a list of virtual machines that we want to bring back from the cloud. So we can see here that we have two virtual machines and we want to bring DR test 05. And if we look in vCloud Air, we see that this DR test 05 it doesn't have a recovery status because this is running in vCloud Air. It's never actually been replicated before into a vSphere environment. So we go back to our web client, we select that virtual machine. We will just pick auto assign a vSphere replication server. If we had more than one, we could actually pick a replication server to use for this replication. But we'll just stick with the default for this demonstration. And then we'll click target location. So this is where we just pick the default data store settings. And you can click on edit, and you can edit these settings and look at your data stores. So for in this example, we'll select VNX, which is just our data store that we have connected to our vSphere host. But if you have storage policies, you can select those. And then we'll just click Next. Now, this is where we can configure our RPO. So as we said in the previous tutorials, you can configure these for 15 minutes to 24 hours. And we can also configure point in time instances for this virtual machine. Even though we are bringing it back from the cloud to our on-premises environment, the configuration options are exactly the same. So we'll confirm our settings and then we just click finish. Now we see that this task is now performing an initial full sync. So that virtual machine that we've brought back from our vCloud Air environment into our on-premises environment never ever existed before in this environment, but we've still configured the replication to bring it back over to our vSphere environment. So we've configured a full failback for virtual machines that never existed previously in our vSphere environment. That concludes the examples of how we configure failover and failback virtual machines from an on-premises vSphere environment to VMware vCloud Air disaster recovery offering. The final tutorial in this series talks about the advanced concepts you can implement to provide a total end-to-end -end disaster recovery solution, including how to deploy pilot-like virtual machines and what to do about local authentication with infrastructure services like Active Directory. To watch other disaster recovery tutorials on VMware vCloud Air, please visit vcloud.vmware.com/tutorials. Thanks for watching.